On today's show, Alexi Hepaniemi is leaving North America. We've seen this before with the Panthers, but we must ask the question, will he make his way back to the Florida Panthers? Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Tuesday, July 25th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at Mondoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. You can follow this podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube. And because we are booming as far as the subscriptions. And don't forget to also press that like button. And yeah, I uh, introduced myself and say to follow me on Twitter. But with this, it's this weird thing that's going on lately where it's, I guess, called X now. I mean, as far as what's showing up on my phone, we have seen the, the Twitter icon with the bird still, not the X, but when you refresh it, it still has that. And these graphics on Locked On, we might soon have to change them to X, and we might have to tell you to follow me on X at Monoman12. So a little bit of a mini rant on Twitter as uh, it's in shambles, if if we're being quite honest. But on, but as we spoke about at the in, in our cold open, Alexi Hepaniemi is leaving North America. And it, it's actually crazy how I post my Friday episode with Nick Fairbanks, and then the very next morning, the news comes out of Alexi Hepaniemi leaving North America to sign uh, in Switzerland with e- EHC BLBN. Uh, I apologize if I am mispronouncing that team's name incorrectly, but that that is where Alexi Hepaniemi is going to in Switzerland. The 2017 uh, 40th overall pick in, in the second round. And... What's great about Alexi Hepaniemi's game is what he can do with his speed and creating space. But what has been the issue with Alexi Hepaniemi ever since he's come into the league? It's really been his size. 5'10", 154. And when it comes to puck battles, it's just been it's been a little bit of a, of a struggle as far as, as that. And he's been in the system now for we're going on six years now. It's since the time he's been drafted and hasn't been a consistent stay uh, with the lineup. And it, it's crazy when you think about when he made his NHL debut, scoring on the game winner in, De- in Detroit in 2021, uh, a, a beautiful sauce uh, pa- pass by Duclair, getting it to Alexi Hepaniemi, and then the uh, and then he gets the game winner there. And even with Hepo uh, filling in for for the lineup in the beginning of the season, played 10 games for the Florida Panthers when Barkoff was out with pneumonia, it played 10 games, even got a goal out of it. And even in the Calder Cup playoffs, averaging a point per game, a goal and in, in six assists in, in those seven games. But it, it's just when you think about the prospects uh, for the Florida Panthers and the ones you get excited about, when when you think about what's in the system and what's coming up because he's been there for so long and hasn't been, hasn't been a consistent state. And let's, let's also not forget Alexi Apanami made a really great case in training camp last year for, for the Panthers. And unfortunately with the cap crunch that the Panthers were in, it was going to be really hard to put him in the lineup. And there are also 13 one way contracts for, for the Panthers on, on this roster. So it was going to be a tough time for him to get into the roster as well, even this year, even with the open cap space that the Panthers have with the majority of Yandel's buyout coming off the books. And this, and when you're in the AHL for four years, that's frustrating after a while for someone like Alexi Hepaniemi. So this was possibly a great, a great er opportunity to get for him to get more ice time. And of course, with the ice that is over, overseas versus what's here, it, it's a bigger rink and and the the game is played a lot differently and hey 
wish wish the best of luck for for Alexi Hepaniemi, and hopefully he makes his way back to the Florida Panthers. And we've seen this we've seen this before. Max and Mammon ended up coming back uh, for um, to the Florida Panthers, played with the President's Trophy um, season, uh, filled in on the top line from time to time because they didn't want to because Andrew Burnett at the time didn't want to mess with the chemistry of the Barkoff and Verhage line. When, when there was a whole bunch of mixing and matching with Duclair, Sam Reinhardt, you name it, when, when, it, when it came to Max and Mammon coming back. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately uh, Max and Mammon didn't stay long his second stint with the Panthers and, and went back to KHL, which he eventually won a championship this year. Another one for the Panthers, and this one hurts a little bit more, with uh, Henrik Borgstrom leaving, uh, for, former first round pick for the Panthers back in 2016, Le- left for left for Liga, uh, and even Anton Lindell playing in that same team as Henrik Borgstrom was playing a bigger role, and that was his draft plus one year too for Anton Lindell, and you just knew that that after a certain amount of time, which Borgstrom himself was undersized as well too uh after after playing at the university of denver and you you think about the guys who are who you get more excited about once again maki semaskevich justin sort of gregor denisenko even even though he he's got to prove something this year mike benning evan naus you, you those are the five names i could think about who i'm a little bit more excited about e- even prior to this season even if alexi hepaniemi wasn't leaving for switzerland so as far as the four guys who are who are given qualifying offers from the panthers everything is done now apparently because logan hutsko even though he was uh, given a qualifying offer is going to be playing in sweden th- this this year uh so they're still going to hold on to his rights just like Ale- alexi hepaniemi and Grigory Denisenko is taken care of as, as well for, for the Panthers and, and John and John Ludwig as well for for the Florida Panthers. So those are of, of, of everyone as far as the RFAs, everyone, everyone is uh, taken care of. So there's no more there's going to be no more news for a while as far as the upcoming RFAs uh, for for the Panthers. But it begs the question, will we see Alexi Hepaniami back and it's uh, I I'm I'm having I'm having a hard time thinking that yes there will be a path for him back and I actually ran a Twitter poll actually for 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 this uh, prior to I, I set this like four hours before recording this show and 71 votes and 75 percent of you guys said that he will not make his way back and there's a few replies uh, saying uh, I I gave like an option B option A option B yes or no and then someone commented saying option c if he does great if not it's it, it's it's fine so it's not something that a lot of people will be sweating at if what regardless of result and one and so best of luck best of luck for hepo in, in his future and hey maybe maybe he finds a way to up his game through that experience over in switzerland so best of luck alexi hepaniami and also when it comes to just farm system and prospect pool even even in january i was looking up ranks for for panthers as far as prospect pool and they were ranked 26th at the time and it's just conti- the continued failed development of what dale talent and the scouting department brought at that time and i know in this regime with bill zito and company the goal is to to keep winning and when you're when you're shipping out assets and even even almost NHL ready players, your prospect pool is going to de- be depleted a- after a while. So it's not a surprise that the that at the time back in January that uh, that the Panthers prospect pool was ranked at, at the time of of uh, of twenty six of twenty six. And we even spoke about on Friday with Nick Fairbanks how don't get married to the cap sp- the amount of cap space that the Florida Panthers have because. It's it's really it's really starting maybe to even bite Bill Zito back uh, when when it came to him going for it back in 2021. Which hey, um, you're trying to win a Stanley Cup at the time, and you really think that you have a chance. But we're start we're starting to really see the lasting effects of it when when it comes to prospect pool 
cap space and what the the Bill Zito's ability or inability to what he can do even in, in a even in an offseason trade or a trade deadline coming up. So Panthers will still have their hands tied for a little while. In segment number two, we are going to discuss more of if the Panthers should try to make a specific signing to increase their chances of winning the Stanley Cup this year. We're going to discuss that and more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about AG1. And our next partner, AG1, is a daily foundational supplement that supports whole body health. And I literally drink it every day. And I started drinking AG1 because being some from South Florida, I drink way too much coffee, sometimes two, uh, two three cups of uh, espresso at times. The, Of course, w- with uh, in my neck of the woods here in Orlando, they're actually expanding Vicky's Bakery. So that's a place that I got to avoid. And how do I avoid that? I got to drink more of my of my AG1. And it's great before my workout. It, it makes me feel great. And it, 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 it doesn't, it helps me fight some of the cravings based on, based on how it, it fuels uh, the energy. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Check it out. Segment number two here on this Tuesday, July 25th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And shout out once again to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. So, as as said on the top of the show, July 25th, dog days of summer. This is the time of the offseason where it's as dead as it can be. Everyone... All the teams have pounced on their fair share of free agents, their fair share of trades that they want to do, want to make in order to make their team either competitive or try as hard as possible to tank for the upcoming NHL entry draft. But there's one, the, there's one big free agent still remaining, and this was brought up by George Richards of Florida Hockey Now talking about if the Florida Panthers should go after Vladimir Tarasenko, who, to give you guys an idea of what his uh, situation is like, fired his agent, rejected an offer of $6 million, uh, apparently from Carolina, and is a guy who wants to get paid after finishing up his contract from what he was given in St. Louis after being drafted there, traded to the New York Rangers. uh, And... Um, the Rangers falling flat on their face in round one, the Rangers just don't have the avenue to bring him back. But the open cat space that the Florida Panthers do have with LTIR, with Montour, with Ekblad, it could give an opportunity for Bill Zito to maybe do a little bit of finessing if he were to meet with Vladimir Tarasenko. And there's no reporting behind this. George Richards isn't even reporting anything. He's just making a suggestion here. So the chances of it are very low of of it happening. But when you think of what Tarasenko brings, protects the buck well, wicked shot, great hands. Oh my goodness. His hands are, after watching some of his highlights, his hands are very similar to Matthew Matthew Kajak and great in space too, Um, using his body to, to, to avoid getting checked and and that is, and there's something that George didn't mention in his article that I want to bring up here and that is that Barkov hasn't really had that consistent piece on his right wing and that's been like that for a while now we 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 see Verhage on his left once in a while we'll see Kachuk on his right but you want you still want to separate the two as far as forward lines and have them a little to to create more balance in the lineup too. Yeah, you can play Kachuk and Barkov from time to time together, but we haven't had that consistency. Duclair's gone. 
at times we've seen Sam Reinhart fill in that spot. But let's be honest, Sam Reinhart plays better with Anton Lindell. He, yeah, a lot of fans are thinking 6.1 is a lot for a third line right winger. But it, it only looks like a lot based on the Florida Panthers cap situation because of how much is going towards their goaltenders, if we're being quite honest. If, if they're paying their goaltenders even decent salary, I mean, their blue line isn't even expensive. Like, it, it look it look it looks like an, it, it, when we think about avenues about clearing space, that's why even in the beginning of the offseason, we mentioned someone like Sam Reinhart. But when you think of Rhino, do you know where he ranks as far as goals scored in the last three seasons for Canadian born players? He's sixth with 89 goals in the last three seasons. That is just under 30 goals. A season and that is including the first of those three seasons when he was with the Buffalo Sabres and let's not forget that Sam Reinhart coming into the Florida Panthers when he was given a qualifying offer all the worry that this fan base had of oh is there is there a rift between the Florida Panthers and Sam Reinhart as far as where contract stands and every single report said no that there wasn't that but what he can do on the power play too, which he has the most goals in a two-year span on the man advantage, it's it's sometimes fans and even myself we could we under we can we don't appreciate what to, as much of what Sam Reinhart brings to the table as far as what he does in the bumper position, being being in the being in the slot area, uh, and and what he could do with getting rebounds as well and and converting um creating screens as well and that is and and the mentorship that he's had with Anton Lindell over his development and Anton Lindell it, it, it he's going to Sam Reinhardt is definitely going to help him i believe help him take that next step in in year 3 of his development and and all and that's why it's very crucial to bring someone on Barkov's wing even 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 more. And could George Richards spoke about could the cats possibly sell him on something like four million even? He did reject six. He wants to get paid. He's probably gonna go back to the market and and get a bigger payday with the cap projected to be eighty seven point five. I mean, Tyler Bertuzzi is doing that with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh my goodness, the spotlight that Tyler Bertuzzi is going to have there, and and him being that that annoying pest <laughs> right in front of the net, and someone who is going to get in your face after the whistles. Oh man, Tyler Bertuzzi is going to get that spotlight right on him, and there's a possibility that Vladimir Tarasenko could. Get that with the Florida Panthers. Um, I know it's not the Toronto media market, but you're talking about the team that just came off an Eastern Conference championship. Yeah, the national TV schedule isn't out yet, but expect a lot of them for the Florida Panthers. And just based on some of the slots and the game times, especially on Wednesdays, which is the TNT nights, you can expect to see the Florida Panthers on on some of those doubleheader nights on uh, on TNT as they will be possibly the first game of the doubleheader too. So that's an opportunity for Vladimir Tarasenko to have even more eyeballs on it. I mean, he's had enough eyeballs on him. I mean, he's a Stanley Cup champion. He he went to he went in the trade deadline to the New York Rangers, who are always on TV. And he's a not one, not two, but four-time 30-goal scorer. I know he hasn't gotten consistently 30 goals. Uh over the last few years, but there was a three three year stretch where he was, and then after that, he was uh, had some issues with the medical sc- staff of the St. Louis Blues, and even after that, I was I had an episode which was crazy. I think two year two years ago <laughs> that I was thinking should the Panthers trade for him, but now there's a chance to possibly get him without giving up anything. We spoke about last segment how the Panthers have given up a lot of assets. And, and it's going to be hard for them to make trades. So could could they make something happen here? And 
listen, we we don't we still don't know the statuses of Montour and Ekblad. Uh, and if if you if you make that move without making a trade, it, there's your answer on how long they'll be out. And and if if they don't, then you could expect them those guys back fair um not fairly soon, but not 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 past maybe January. So you you got to keep that space al- alive if you can, because someone's going to be on the short end of the stick, especially on the decor, like a Dimitri Kulikov, even maybe a Mike Riley, even. And I I doubt this one. I doubt this one will be placed on waivers. I doubt Oliver Ekman Larson will be placed on waivers, but there's a possibility that that could happen. It's not a 0% chance too, but you know, you gotta, you gotta be creative if you do end up bringing him in. I mean, last year they couldn't even bring Eric Stahl on less than a million last year because of their cap crunch. And they had to wait until Aaron Eckblad went on LTIR to start the season, excuse me, um, after the third game of the season to sign Eric Stahl to that one year deal. And then, Rudolph Balsers was the guy who uh, who uh, was the sacrificial lamb for Eric Stahl being being in the lineup for the the Panthers. So that that those are those are the business. That's the business of doing hockey. But if you, you know you're not going to be off, be able to offer him more than six million, so he's looking at a, a big payday. But can you sell him on winning? Again, this is a team that's coming off an Eastern Conference championship. This is a team that's bringing a lot of the guys back with some additional role players. And this is, again, like we spoke about last year, last week, this looks like last chance for this group of role players. Your core is there. But this group of role players, it's going to be a big reset. And why not just find a way to add another piece to it? In segment number three, we're going to discuss where Matthew Kachuk's contract ranks as far as best in the NHL. We're going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this Tuesday, January, excuse me, July 25th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And thank you guys for for all the everydayers who come back and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. And let's talk about Matthew Kachuk and his contract. I mean, we've talked a whole bunch of Matthew Kachuk over the weekend, especially because of the one-year anniversary of the trade, which... If you guys have not already, go back to Saturday's episode where I bring in Jess Belmasto of Locked On Calgary Flames to discuss uh, the one-year anniversary of the trade. So, so the Athletic today, I mean, we've had our fair share of criticism of the Athletic on where they rank the Florida Panthers as far as most improved uh, to, to least improve. And it, th- we also discussed that last week, too which if you guys want to go back to it, this is all documented, all archives. Y'all, y'all have the freedom to, to, to go back there, but there, the athletic has ranked best, the top 10 best contracts in the NHL right now. And top 10 is David Pasternak at 10, Charlie McAvoy, Jason Robertson, Miro Haskinen, Adam Fox, Matthew Boldy, Timmy Stutzla, Kale McCarr, Jack Hughes, and number one is Matthew Kachuk. And discusses mostly about his offensive rating, which is a plus 24. His defensive rating is right at zero, which is a great thing that we love to see. Uh, Don Luschichin talks about how he has had the best five-on-five uh, and uh, some of the best five-on-five analytics in, in, in the era. And what what he can do 
with with being that power forward and 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 defensively as well he just does it on both sides of 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 the of the ice and let's not forget that Matthew Kachuk is when it comes to averages he is he led in the regular season most passes from behind the net when when you're a goaltender and you know that Matthew Kachuk is behind there and you're hugging your post and you're and you're looking and you're trying to see through your peripherals of, of of the mask and you don't know where that puck is going oh man that alarms are going off i mean alarms will go off when matthew kachuk hits the ice period just imagine just you can only imagine when he is behind that net and and constantly trying to let the play develop to get a, a centering feed for someone who's uh right right on the on the doorstep and it, it's crazy because uh when you think about percentage of cap hit for the Panthers right now he's at about 11 percent of the Panthers cap and he's not in eight figures he 9.5 and this is the thing Bill Zito wasn't even the one who negotiated the contract technically he was kind of in the know yeah because because it was a sign and trade but all thanks to Calgary Flames form former Calgary Flames GM Brad Treliving for making that happen uh, of course Whenever you're agreeing on a trade to to get that to make it happen, he is there. There's back and forth phone calls. How do you want to structure the signing bonuses as well, and and base salary as well. And but the fact that it was that it was structured in that way, you got to think. Uh, you got to think of uh, Matthew Kajuk's former team in the Calgary Flames. And you also got to think about what the greediness and toughness that he brings as far as battling as well for a lot along the boards. Uh, great, great with his hands. Like, like we've spoken about so many times. I mean, I was just watching some of the highlights of the playoff run. And I, I go back to that incredible goal that he had in game four, where his body was behind the net, but he still reached between his legs to get it past Linus Allmark. And the game, the game was over at the at the time uh, for for the Panthers. But he still found a, a way to get that in the back of the net and to still at least make it not as embarrassing a, a, as it as it was, and, and and all. But also, Dom Luchichin goes over the surplus of what Matthew Kachuk is worth. And according to his chart, the surplus of Matthew Kachuk's contract would be worth 17.5% of the cap, but a, a an AAV of anywhere between 15 and 17 million. And when the and when the NHL came out with their their salary cap of what it was going to be. The highest paid pl- possible paid player can be paid only sixteen million AAV, but the fact that Matthew Kachuk's surplus is <laughs> the the high of that surplus is seventeen million. That it, it, it's it's great it's great to see how he makes that much of an impact. Uh, as far as the other guys on the list, David Pasternak is tenth. Uh, 60 goals and making 11 million and he's 10th if his cap hit was lower as far as like maybe in the eighth or ninth, that would have been number one over Kajak. sorry to say um but it's also the percentage is also taken into consideration the figures percentage of cap as well jack hughes like as like we spoke about is number two and he's and nobody the only one on the New Jersey Devils making nine million is Dougie Hamilton. One contract that I'm surprised isn't on here is Cole Caulfield. His contract hasn't even begun yet, but he went into he went when he went down with injury. He was at 29 goals. And I believe his injury was like February, March. He was on pace to possibly be a, a, a 45 to 50 goal scorer. And he signed an eight year term at 7 million AAV. I'm surprised that contract isn't on there. The athletic, this was not 
I did not come up with this, but The Athletic also brought up a good point. Leon Dreisaitl, two years away from his contract expiring, making 8.5. But I guess with this exercise, it's also considering the term as well. As 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 far as 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 far as uh as far as that. So they are putting into consideration how long a guy is going to be on your team based on the value he's putting for that period of time and the fact that you don't have to worry about a raise coming up anytime soon. So I guess that is the consideration of why this exercise and this model is shaped the way it is. But Again, you go back to efficiency. I mean, last year, the Florida Panthers were the number one ranked team as far as contract efficiency for skaters. And yes, I said skaters. They did not include the goaltenders here based on ability to reset as well, based on how Barkoff and Kachuk have the same timeline as far as contention. And that was before they made a, a run to the Stanley Cup final, too. So this was last year, and now the Panthers are reaping the benefits of a career high in 109 points. A guy who put everything on the line to try to win a Stanley Cup. And a broken sternum, we assume for him he's still going to be available for the start of the season. Uh, it's like a four- to six-week uh, recovery for for matt for matthew but the fact that he matthew kachuk has been in clutch moment after clutch moment you think about those three game-winning goals in the eastern conference final just the guy the guy has just does it all the, the guy is just marketable as, as well and he's definitely made a difference in how this sport is viewed and how superstars are viewed in the game of hockey. People Magazine, man. He, he was on People Magazine when they were making their runs to the final. Also, uh, before we get out of here, I thought Jason Robertson was a little low uh, as well. Uh, he had a contract dispute with the with the Dallas Stars uh, just last offseason and, and get, not getting the type of AAV he wanted, but sh- signed a five-year term. And He's outperforming that contract as well. I'm surprised that he himself is not higher on that list. But just the other guys, Timmy Stutzla, who's going to be end up being the best player possibly in that draft over Lafreniere, Byfield, and the same draft as Anton Lindell as well. Uh, so that 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 is another value contract that the – that the Ottawa Senators have on their roster. And there's a lot of pressure on them to make something happen this year. But Matthew Kachuk is the guy who is ranked the top best contract in the, in the NHL right now. And the Florida Panthers, they Bill Zito is uh, smiling every day, knowing that he doesn't have to worry about Chucky uh, when it comes to that. And one more thing, as far as percentage cap hit cap hit, you know, where, Matthew Kachuk ranks in the NHL in the whole entire league. He's 50th as far as taking up a, a, a team's cap hit percentage. And, and he, and he is 50th as far as that. And with the cap only go going up that number itself, it's going to go down, down, down. And you, and it's only going to look better on the tail end of it. Of course, he signed it at 24, it's going to end at 32. If we if we even see a Kachuk even in the his age 30, 31 year, that that contract was all but worth it to make the trade happen. But thank you guys for listening to this edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Every day is make sure you come back on Wednesday for another edition of Winans Wednesday, where Jacob Winans will be back on the show. So if you like what you're hearing. Please subscribe to the podcast and be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steer Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. They can make the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day.
So I'm Armando Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We're to a team every day.